When you have two applications and you don't have an integration between them, it can be pretty time consuming to take all of the data and import it from one into the other. So sometimes you can get away with using Zapier or Zoho Flow and they'll support the applications that you want and that'll allow you to build an integration yourself, but that's not always the case. So I'm gonna show you what you can do if Zoho Flow doesn't support an application that you're using, but you still wanna automate part of your process for uh, exporting data into a spreadsheet and then importing it into Zoho CRM. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an automation using Zoho Flow, so that way, anytime you drop a spreadsheet into a particular folder in your Zoho work drive, that will automatically extract all the key data from that spreadsheet and import it into your CRM. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is hop over into Zoho Work Drive, which is our file management, and we'll wanna set up a team folder um, or a folder inside an existing team folder. So that could work too. So right now I've made a team folder called files to import, and then I'll add another subfolder in there and I'll just call it spreadsheets. And so then whenever we get like a spreadsheet of some new leads, uh, we'll be able to then just drop that spreadsheet file into this folder and that will automate the import that we're going to build in the next step. So now let's jump over to Zoho Flow and we're going to create a new flow. So I'll just call this import spreadsheets and hit create. Okay, and then we're going to want to choose an app trigger in Zoho Flow because basically we want our automation to trigger as soon as something happens in one of our apps, work drive. As soon as the spreadsheet hits work drive, that's when we want to start automating stuff. So I'll search for work drive in here, choose that. You could build the same kind of thing um, with another one like Google Drive pretty easily too. Okay, so then we will choose our trigger. So I'm gonna choose file created and then hit next. And then I'll choose my team, and then I have to choose my team folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose files to import. And then um, I could just drop them straight into there, or I could even have a subfolder in there. And the reason this could be useful is that if you're importing data from multiple different sources, you might wanna have a folder for each different type of source, because you'll see a bit later on, you'll wanna recreate this flow for each data source that you're using because maybe one application is going to format all of its data one way, another application is going to format it another way, and so you'll have to account for that in order to automate those. Okay, so we'll choose spreadsheets for now, and we've got our trigger set up in Flow now. So now the next step is we can come over here to Logic, click on that, and then we're going to want to add a custom function. So I've already created a custom function for this, but uh, I'll just show you how I create it. So you click this plus button, you might have to scroll down there, and you give your function a name. You can call it whatever you want, but one thing that's important to remember is it can't have spaces in it. Um, so I'll just call this, you know, extract underscore spreadsheet. Um, return type, you can just leave that as void. And then the input parameters, it's gonna be very important that you follow this exactly the way I show you for this step. So I'm gonna make one that's called sheet underscore ID, and ID is capital. I'll set that to string, and then I'll click the plus, and I'll make another one. It's called sheet underscore name, and I'll also set that to string. So basically, the reason these have to be exact is because the code that I'm gonna share with you uses these same exact variable names. So it's important you copy that, it is case sensitive. And then uh, string, that's just saying, we're gonna import some parameters into our code. So basically it's just gonna take information about the spreadsheet that's coming into WorkDrive and pass that information into our code, which we will create in the next step. So I'll go ahead and hit create. And that takes us to our code builder thing. This is the part where you're going to want to look in the description of the video, find the uh, code that we've shared with you. It's in a TXT file. So you'll just want to open that up in like Notepad or whatever you use. 
and copy that and paste it in here. So we want to make sure that those brackets that were there, those little curly braces, um, stay in place. I'm not going to explain to you every single thing that this code does, but I will show you a few of the important parts and the things that you will maybe need to tweak to make it work for you. So the first thing that you need to know about this script is basically it works by looping through all of the rows in your spreadsheet and then one at a time adding that row of data into your CRM. So whatever application's data you wanna be importing, it's gonna have to have that data broken into columns where each row on the spreadsheet represents like one record in the CRM that you would wanna create. That's how most spreadsheets are already set up, but just thought you should know that sometimes programs do some weird stuff, they don't format them that way. Um, in that case, you would have to do a bit of manual work ahead of time first. Okay, so you'll see this is where the meat of the code is actually, these parts that I highlighted right here. We have two things in red, right, for each line. There's this thing, first underscore name, and then a comma, and this little thing that says lead, get JSON, and then another thing in red. So the first one, that's going to be the API name of a field in your CRM. So basically it's just saying, hey, take some data from the spreadsheet, put it into the first name field in the CRM. And then the second part is telling me, well, which part of the spreadsheet matches up with that field in the CRM. So I'm gonna switch over here and show you my spreadsheet example right here, right? So let's say this is the data that we're getting from our application. These are some leads. We want them to go into the CRM. So up at the top, these column names in my spreadsheet, I'm gonna have to match those exactly in my script and it's gonna be case sensitive. So you need to know which column in your spreadsheet matches up with which field basically. And then real quick, I'll show you how to check your CRM API names. If you wanna know like what is the name for a specific field in CRM, um, you would open up Zoho CRM, go to your settings, and then in the developer space, look for APIs. So you can only do this if you have like high enough privileges in the CRM. And then once you're in here, click on API names, and then you can find one of your modules. So I'm gonna import into leads, I'll click that one. And there's a field label, which is like what we see when we're using the CRM. And then the API name is this middle column. So that's like what we have to reference in our code in order to match things up there. So going back over to my script now, the last part here, um, create or update lead. So this is pretty straightforward. It tells you exactly what it's doing. One thing you may wanna know is that if you're not familiar with this, you can change this to contacts and basically the whole thing should still work the same or you could change it to deals. The only thing that you'll have to change is making sure that uh, you have the correct field names for whatever module you wanna import to. So what I'm showing you isn't just for leads, you can use it for other modules as well. Another thing to note, I have a line here that's commented out in the script. So it looks gray because it's commented out and has these two slashes. So I can delete those slashes and that will make it active again. And then I could put two slashes on this line. So if we wanted to only create leads and not update existing ones, then we could use that line instead. But you wanna be careful if you do that because you could end up with duplicates in your system. If two people have the same email or something, it'll try and create another copy of them. Uh, okay, and then the, another thing to point out here is this little part right here. You can delete this part in the curly braces if you want and delete the comma right there if you want. All that's saying is once the leads come into the system, if we have any workflows set up for like once a new lead comes in, it should still be triggered. If I delete that, then it won't uh, necessarily trigger it. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know about how this code works. So then I will hit save. Nice, so we have it uh, working now. And then what we'll have to do is drag on our new functions. We just created the function over here. We'll drag it on to our flow. And then it's gonna ask me for the sheet ID and the sheet name. So for sheet ID, we're gonna come over here to our work drive section and we can click on file created. And we have to figure out which one of these things refer refers to it. So I can actually type in um, and search in here, which is pretty nice. So I could put in ID. There's a lot of things that have IDs, so you'll wanna put file ID in there. 
And then we need the sheet name. So we'll come in and search for name and we can do file name here and I'll hit save. So those go into the parameters that we set up right before we created the script. So that's it, everything is all set up and ready to go. So the only other step then is to test if it's working well. So what you'll wanna do is turn your flow on. By default, it stays off while you're building. So I've turned it on and now it should be working. So what I'm gonna do is hop over here into work drive, um, go into spreadsheets, and I will go and upload my spreadsheet from my desktop. So here we go, new leads, let's upload that file. Okay, cool, so that got uploaded. And now we should be seeing all of the data from that spreadsheet populate into the CRM in just a moment. But before we look at that, let's go back over to Zoho Flow. And I just wanna show you how you can check the history and debug things when you're building a flow. So if you click on history when you're inside the flow, um, once you've actually executed it, you should see a record of every time this flow has happened. So we can see it just happened right now. It took four seconds for it to execute. And we see the little green thing, which means that probably everything worked. But just in case you want to like see more, you can click on output for your script um, or input, and you can start trying to debug based on, okay, so if I look at like the output from step one, maybe I wasn't actually getting the data I thought I was, and I need to like change out a variable. So basically, when you're writing functions in Zoho Flow, that's the best way to kind of check those. So now if I switch back over to Zoho CRM and I go to my leads module, then I should see some new leads in here. So let's actually look at like our spreadsheet. So we should see um, like Donnie, this person should be populated into the CRM. So I'm gonna copy their email and just do a search for them. And bam, look at that Donnie and all Donnie's data has landed inside the CRM, and all we'll have to do moving forward is just drag a spreadsheet into a folder. It's that easy. So then uh, the last thing that you would want to set up is then if you have multiple data sources, you're going to want to go back and recreate this flow one time for each data source, and then maybe have four different folders set up in your work drive where you can have like, okay, here's this data source, data source B, data source C, and then you can just drag those files on at the end of each week, the end of each month, and you have it all set up and ready to go automatically. I hope this was helpful, so click subscribe and like this video if you want to see more stuff like this on YouTube.